Hey, St. Luke, this is Pastor T.C. Johnson. We're here at the St. Luke Christian Church. It's word and worship time. We're certainly thankful to be able to uh, come to you and be with you in this form of fellowship. I've been told this is a form of the virtual fellowship. It's uh, one of the things that's happening. And now I understand our young people see this as fellowship, as being together in meetings and everything else, so also in, in church. I'm having to wrap my heads around that because, um, you know, it's just a new idea for me that uh, our fellowship would not give us, you know, the warm closeness. Amen. But uh, it's time for this prayer time. We're going to pray. We're going to have a short word, a very short word today. I want you to look at it and I want you to re re review and I want you to reread it and I want the Holy Spirit to speak to you out of this word about what's really being said uh, in this very um, applicable um, word. Let's let's pray first. I know you've been watching uh, probably the news. You see the things that are happening, happening um, around uh, the country and around the world. And I want you to fear not, for behold, God is with you. I'll be with you. In and through the fire, says the Lord. And for those doomsday people who think the world is about to come to an end, I've been there a number of times in my years um, of being alive, and um, it's going to happen, but, you know, we can't worry about that. I'm just praying that we'll be ready when he comes. So get your loved ones around the, your praying place, and let's put prayer lay on our heart the desires of our heart put on our heart those things we want god to touch heal and deliver and and when you think about the goodness of god that god has brought you through so far this year so many over half million in our country have died so over half million families um within a year have lost someone to COVID, and maybe you may be one of those as well what i want to say to you is that God is a God who uh, is a comforter of grief. He's a God who can comfort you in grief. But whatever your concern is, lay it on the altar of your heart. And tell the Lord, even uh, though it may be jagged and painful, tell the Lord, I love you. I love you. I love you, Lord, today. Because you cared for me in such a special way. That's why I praise you, I lift you up, I magnify your name, that's why my heart is filled with praise. Father, we enter your presence saying thank you for another day. Father, let your will be done, your name be glorified in Jesus. Have your way, Lord. You are the Father who knows best. So we humble ourselves in your presence, God, and we ask that you be glorified in all it is that we do. That your name be glorified in Jesus. Give us what we need to glorify you by way of resources. Forgive us our sins and shortcomings, which may be so, so many. Lead us not into temptation, but deliver us from that evil one. For you are the power, you are the kingdom and glory forever. Father, in this hour, I pray that you touch each home and each heart under the sound of my voice. You and you alone know what we stand in the need of, God. You and you alone, not, we don't even know, God. We know symptoms and not source, God. We pray that you heal the source and correct the source. Now, now God, have your way. We ask you to build a hedge about us. We thank you for all that you've done. So for God, thank you. Thank you for blessing us with another opportunity for looking at looking at us god knowing us and then looking over i show sure, treating us like the babes we are in you god thank you god i pray for peace in every home i pray for the presence of your power and your spirit in every home right now god touch heal and deliver whatever situation is in our heart is on the heart of your children god touch heal and deliver as only you can we pray for our nation, God. We pray for your world, Father. We, we pray for those who are struggling in, in, as it relates to um, 
the murdering of, of innocence, God. We pray, God, that we can come together as a nation, as a people, as believers. For I believe that if we believers would follow you in what is just and right for all one, everyone, and love as you described love, we wouldn't have these things. I know we wouldn't. So, God, we say thank you now. We give you the glory. We give you the honor. We give you the praise. We do it in Jesus' name. Amen. Amen. I want you to turn to the first chapter of the Gospel uh, of Acts, which is written by Luke, the Gospel of Acts, written by Luke. Actually, the Gospel of of Luke, and I said the Gospel, the Book of Acts, the Gospel of Luke, and uh, the Book of Acts were written as one document by one uh, one person, and so that is. Um, that is Luke, who is the author. Uh, Luke is not a disciple. He's the author of the Gospel uh, of Luke and the author of the book of Acts. The word Acts means Acts uh, of the Holy Ghost. And it says the Acts of the Apostles, but it's the Acts of the Apostles who are empowered by the Holy Spirit. It's the Acts of the Apostles as they were empowered by the Holy Spirit. You can look at it that way, because in this book is where we say the church got to start and is ordained by God and come together to be a global force. So I want you to go to the book of Acts. I want you to look at chapter 2, and we're going to talk for a minute. Uh, in chapter 2, verse 1, it says, in verse 1, Acts chapter 2, the King James rendering, it reads, And when the day of Pentecost was fully come, they were all with one accord in one place. And suddenly there was a sound from heaven like a rushing mighty wind, and it filled all the house where they were sitting. And there appeared unto them cloven tongues of, as of a fire, and it sat upon each of them, and they were all filled with the Holy Spirit and began to speak with other tongues as the Spirit gave them utterance. And there were dwelling at Jerusalem Jews, devout men out of every nation under the heaven. I want to talk about um, the power of our unity, the power of our unity and the presence of God, power of our unity. It's a potential, the power of our unity and the presence of God. There is a potential. If we get on one accord for one purpose, the Lord will show up show out and make great change. That, I said again, the power of our unity, and I'm talking about the unity of those who are convinced and convicted that yes, God in, is re real and that he has um, purpose for us individually and for us collectively. We don't have to get on one accord. The power of our unity. I'm talking about believers now. You can understand the division, the divisiveness in the world. Uh, that's the world of non-believers. Um, because there's not um, a unified church to show a divided world any difference. The, the, the idea... God in the creation of the church in this passage the presentation of the word to men of different languages different dialects is an indicator that God has taken down the barriers of between the nations as it relates to a relationship with God and therefore it's God's purpose that we as believers uh, focus in on him in unity. Certainly, 
transforming us from the being divided to being united under one Father, which will bring to fruition and fulfillment the idea of the Lord's Prayer, our Father, which makes possible you know, um, this coming together as brothers because if we all call uh, him our father, then that places us on the platform of brotherhood and brother and sisterhood and brother and sisterhood on the same platform because of our father. And in the text here before you, what we have is this idea of the Holy Spirit empowering those who were um, unified, those who were together on the same accord with the same expectation. And that expectation was that God would show up. It, something was happening. The day of Pentecost is happened on the first day of the week, the day of Pentecost meant 50th. It was uh, the first day after the book of weeks, then weeks, you know, um, then the day of Pentecost comes about in its 50th, and it's the first day. It's a day after the Sabbath, and, 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 and it was on that day that we, uh, some of us as believers, uh, recognize and worship on the day of Pentecost, on the first day of the week. Uh, we, we, you know, that's a deep study. Uh, but when someone say why we mm, worship on the first day mm, of the week has to do with this whole idea of the resurrection of Jesus. And after he had um, been lifted, had he raised in power um, by the power of God from the dead, he promised that uh, he would leave us a, um, or send us a, a sidekick, a paraclete, some, someone to be with us, which is his honor, the Holy Spirit. And we find that they were unified, the power of our unity. They were unified with the same expectation and the same purpose. Let me just say this to us in our various homes. It's hard to have power in a divided house. And there are so many little things that make or put mom and dad at odds or adversarial. And it's hard to have power in, in that house. It's hard to have the power of the Holy Spirit in the church when we're not unified. That's the individual church, but that's also the collective church body. When we're divided by all of the things that divide the world, by they don't have the Holy Spirit. So the Holy Spirit should indwell us and bring us together as one family. And it occurred uh, this way, according to the text, I'm talking about the power uh, and the potential of power if we were on one accord, if we were unified, if we would not let race and we would not let uh, different things divide us. If we unify on the fact that God is God and this is his world and he'd have his way and he has given us instruction and nothing justifies us violating his instructions individually or collectively. And what I'm saying that God has given us certain basic stuff to do, basic training Christianity, basic stuff, Christianity 101, you know, to love uh, each other, to love even your enemy. Christianity 101. Mm -hmm. they, 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 on one accord, they were, they, they were in the same place on one accord, and the power of the Holy Spirit came. 
text and I say to you, uh, we wait and try to get the power of the Holy Spirit when we get in the physical building of the church, but we are not on one accord in our individual places, and you can't get on one accord by yourself. But if there was power in your house of the Holy Spirit, there'd be more power in the church house of the Holy Spirit. You can't get on um, one accord at home. How do you expect to come out here and get on one accord? I'm talking about uh, the power of our unity and, and, and the possibility that await us when we get on one accord. What happens in this text, to make my point clear, plain, and be through with it, is the fact that because they were, the book says, um, they were um, in one place, and, um, and yeah, the, yeah, they were in one place, and the Holy Spirit, uh, on one accord, and the Holy Spirit uh, came because they were, all together expecting, and that's 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 understand expecting the presence of the spirit. I, I need to help somebody here, help myself here, help the church here. Too often we come with expectations, we come with desires, but they are low priority. If we can come together with the expectation and the expectation of the Holy Spirit and the desire that the Holy Spirit enter the place, the other stuff will be well taken care of. Let me say it this way. Sometimes we come with the expectations of healing, um, the expectation of be given given peace or, or hearing the answer to our problem. All that's good, but the highest expectations should be the expectation and the desire that the presence of God by the Holy Spirit will show up at the house and in the house. And when he shows up, that other stuff that's bothering you, that's troubling you, that's calling you trials and tribulation, uh, will, you'll have strength even to, to get through it or God will show you how to get over it, or God will show you how to handle it, because he who is the Holy Spirit will be present with you because uh, uh, of the reality that we were on uh, one accord. We were all expecting God to be at the house, God's Spirit to be in the room, God to show up and show out and help us to, to, to as they can say, help us to make it, you know. In, in this particular passage, uh, this group of men and, and women uh, had, uh, uh, had been uh, witnessed to, many had seen the risen Christ, and he had told them before he ascended that you are to wait uh, until the Spirit Spirit come. And many of us have to understand what that means. You know, sometimes we have to wait and we have to learn and we have to pray and we have to grow until the Holy Spirit empowers us to make a move to be a witness, because that's, in essence, what the Lord wants you and me to do, be a witness, not just to his resurrection, but to his life, through the truth of his word. God has a set of design for us and has a desire for us to reflect to others who God is because they can see it operating in who we are. Come here, Holy Ghost, help me right here, because he, he says, they were together in one place, and they were on one accord. They were all with one accord. They were all pointing uh, at the same thing. They were all there for the same thing. And since it was 120 of them, I don't believe 120 had a headache. Uh, I don't believe 120 had children's trouble. I don't believe 120 had marriage trouble. I, I believe all of them were there because they were waiting until God empowered them to live for him, to witness for him, to be his witness. You know, if, if you don't have uh, power, you have a weak witness, but you have have the power of ha knowing that God has showed up on the scene through the Holy Spirit to encourage you and undergird you in times like these. <coughs> you have to be able to give witness to the Lord out of the power of your experience, excuse me, uh, with the Lord. I, I say the power of our unity the possibility and potential of the victory 
over things of the world. We're here, we're in, uh, in Acts, see here, this has been left by Luke as a lesson for us. Luke leaves us a lesson in Acts chapter 2. He tells us what happened on the day of Pentecost, a beautiful text, where he tells us about the birth, they say, or call it, of the church. The church uh, was um, comes in on unity, a unified group, praying and praising God together. They were waiting for the Spirit. That's what, and when the Spirit uh, showed up, the Spirit, uh, the Spirit came, and 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 he talks about he came as a cloven uh, tongues of fire that lit up on all of them, and the Spirit baptized. That's in verse five, and, and then 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 the Spirit uh, feels, and then the Spirit spoke. Uh, and so when you read down through verse thirteen, you discover. The spirit was not dormant. The spirit shows up and the spirit uh, baptizes. The, the spirit uh, spoke. And that's speaking. Uh, he spoke to everyone in the area. No one was left out. Any language they had, the spirit spoke. And to us, he spoke to uh, us in our various situations in life. I, I, wherever we are, on the ladder of society. The Spirit came and spoke where we could understand it from wherever we were. And, and I, I stopped to tell you, and I wanted to encourage you today uh, that there is, 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 there is um, a potential power in our unity. The, 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 the power in our, in our unity to, to that God can use us when we're on one accord, when we're um, when we are speaking, when we are seeking the same thing, and so when in worship, whether it's your home worship or whether it's your public worship in church, we ought to be focused on on God that the God would show up and indwell our praise. And when He shows up and God indwells our praise, He has the power to help us with whatever situation, whatever circumstance, whatever dilemma, whatever problem. We ought to just start praying together and on one accord. Lord, I just want you to, to, to be present. I want to be in your presence. We want to be in your presence. I didn't bring you a whole lot of the things that are plaguing me. They are not a priority. But God, I want you just to show up in my praise, show up in my song, show up in my prayer, because I know when you show up, you will uh, look at, you will analyze, you will see what I really, really need. And on one accord they were on the day of Pentecost, and, and, and the potential and the power and great purpose that God be spread through them to others. And when you read the whole text, they're going to testify. They're going to witness so much and so openly and so fluid. They're going to do it so freely that someone is going to say they must be drunk. It makes me believe that they were making up some noise. They were not just sitting around being intellectual. Somebody was shouting. Someone praising someone, praising God. Someone was giving God glory and telling them uh, how the Lord had laid his hand on them, how the Lord had brought them through, how the Lord had lifted them, how the Lord had saved them, how the Lord had forgiven them, how the Lord had loved them out of their mess. They, they were excited about it and they were not whispering about it. They were Telling the community, they was telling those around about the goodness of God, about the fact that he died, that Christ died and, and bled for them and saved them from a burning hell and helped them become better people. They were witnessing for the Lord by the power of the presence of the Holy Spirit. And that's what we need. We need a rekindling in our home, a rekindling. You see, if the only place you shout in church, the only place you praise is in church, then you 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 have very little you 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 have very little power. But you ought to be able to praise in your car, praise in your, in your bedroom, praise praise in your bed, praise in your in your house. And when you get in the house of God, prayer will be mm, that will be something that you just do. And when we all get together, Amen. The the presence of the Holy Spirit will come and undergird us. Will bring us together as the people and believers of God. The book says the day of Pentecost had fully come. Yeah, yeah. They were all 
for, there for the same purpose on one accord. Praying, praising God. And everything else, because the presence of the Holy Spirit comes. God will fix the rest of the stuff. Let your priority be. Let your priority be that the Spirit of God shows up at your prayer ground. Your place of residence, your place of worship. And we're not be worried about what one or the other think. But when the God has has brought you through and kept you safe and delivered you and in spite of you, and when you come to his house, Jesus said, and this house shall be a house of prayer, of prayer and praise. That is the purpose, our unity. Our unity. In our unity, God shows up. And we get together on one accord. The power of the Holy Spirit fell. Fell in the day of Pentecost. And started a church that have made Jesus Christ a global affair. Global concern. A global opportunity. Let me share with you this evening. That I like some contemporary stuff. But I don't want to leave the Holy Spirit. I don't want to get so cool and so comfortable. I have to be quiet. I want us to come together on one accord. Ready to praise God. Ready to give God glory. Ready to lift up our voices. Glorify Him. We as a church, collectively, or churches around the country, collectively, focus on God, understanding Him through the Word, and apply the Word. The Holy Spirit will show up and fix this world, fix this country. Let's get on one accord. You may have heard this word in Something may have been said that you say, I want to join that. I want to be a part of that. That focuses on God and not on me. My problem. Focuses on my place. Under God. I, I hear that God can use me in spite of me. I want to be a part of that. If that's you. You want to give Christ your life. You can do it tonight. You can do it right now. Just repeat after me and say, Lord, I'm a sinner. I need a Savior. I accept the Lord Jesus Christ as my dead, buried, and resurrected Savior. And I ask Jesus to come into my heart. Own me as his child. Amen. Welcome to the household of faith. God bless you. Go to our website at sanctlochristianchurch.org. Follow the Join Us menu. There, uh, someone will reach out to you. Welcome again to the household of faith. And listen, hey, put it aside. Whatever it is that divides us, divides you and your love. Get on one accord and focus on God and that thing that was pushing you away from each other. God has a solution for it. If you can just focus on Father, what would you have me to do? Amen. Till we meet again, you be safe and be blessed.